Don't try to chant 16 good rounds or 10 high-quality maha mantras. Just chant and attentively hear one mantra. Sounds quite revolutionary, but it works. It helps the mind to slow down. Because meditation means bringing the mind to a, a more slower state of activity and clearing away this, you know, like all these thoughts that come in and out of our mind. They'll still come. But the rest of the keys will help you deal with that. This is the third key, is to distort your determination. I'm trying to meet Krishna in the mantra. We can be, term be determined only about one mantra we are chanting now. If we think ahead, even to plan greater determination for subsequent mantras, the mind will respond with increased passion and we will lose its focus on the holy name. We have to accomplish when we have chanted one mantra, what we have accomplished when we have chanted one mantra with attention, we have allowed our consciousness to touch Krishna's transcendental holy name. We have bathed our consciousness in sweetness. So if you can hear one mantra clearly, that is powerful. The results are that coming to simply one maha mantra. But we might say, my mind is too quick. It's off before I catch it. If I won't listen to one mantra, then request it to listen to one name. Even one mantra may be too much for the mind, the mind to listen to. Listen to one name. The point is, slow down. The state of meditation, according to the scientific analysis of brain waves, is the state where the mind is at its slowest state of activity. There are what is called alpha waves, there are beta waves, there are gamma waves, and then there are delta waves. The delta waves are similar to the waves that the mind has during the state of sleep. But in meditation, delta waves are also the, the, the prominent. So the mind has to go slow down. So this is how you slow down your mind, by hearing one mantra. Back to that same formula. Bring that mind into that mantra. So in order to do that, or in order to facilitate that, you have to be somewhat in an atmosphere where there's very little distraction, or we might say no distraction. If you live at home, most of you do, create an environment free from distraction. His Holiness Sachi Nandana Maharaj calls it, create your sacred space. Get a place in your house. Don't chant in a place where you do your work or you're pretty much doing everything else throughout the day because as soon as you see things that remind you of your day-to-day -day activities, your mind will start to think and then you'll lose focus like that. And so have a little area, maybe where your deities are and where it's somewhat quiet. Those of you who have children, I know it's very difficult to chant because you have to take care of the children. Therefore, you have to find time when the children are either sleeping or someone else is taking care of it. Then you, you can't hold the baby with one arm and chant the other. It's just like the baby requires attention and so does Krishna. And so which baby are you going to attend to? You know? <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty, so the point is that it's practically impossible it's not impossible, it's actually offensive to do something while chanting the holy names. So that's the third key. State your determination. Okay, the f fourth key is, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, from wherever the mind wanders, bring it back. Part of applying the third key, determination, is to be determined to bring the bag, mind back to wherever it wanders. Okay, it's going to wander. It's just his nature. It's going to wander. We have to be determined to listen to one mantra no matter what. Back to that same. What the mind says. By nature the mind is nischalati astitam, agitated and unsteady. The mind is, na that's the nature of the mind. Your mind is always moving from one thought, one idea to another. And especially in this age of Kali, um, the society has increased mind agitation. 
so much that you see nowadays it's very, very difficult for young people to perform meditation as opposed to 50 years ago. It was a lot easier. Because people are so much affected by this um, television society. If you, I, I don't recommend you watch television, but the images on the television are moving on the average two to three seconds. No image stays. And then they have this, have you seen that, have, that speed up thing? They go, T -t 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 -t. all these images, you wonder, You've seen that? You know, the t TVs, they just go boom. And you know, there's about 10 images in like two seconds. Like That's what they do, because they don't want you to think. Because if you think, you might decide to turn off the television. But the point, <laughs> the point is, is that the na that's the, that's our minds are being dragged from one thought to another, to another, to another, and to another. We have no center. Our consciousness is being pulled this way, that way, this way, that way. So when you chant japa, it's completely the opposite. It's the idea of bringing that restless and what we say, quickly moving mind down to one focus, just on Krishna's name. It's very difficult. So it takes a regimented process that by applying these different keys, you can gradually slow your mind down and focus on Krishna's holy name like that. So the mind's going to wander. Ah, bring the mind back. Just bring it back, that's all. Goes away, bring it back. Bring it back, bring it back, that's all. Don't let it go away, because if it goes away, the, long, the longer it stays away, the harder it is to bring it back. The longer it stays on the mantra, the easier it is to chant. And the longer it stays away from the mantra, the harder it is to bring it back when you have to try to bring it back. The fifth key is detachment. Freedom in chanting comes from focusing on one mantra we are currently chanting. Same point again. Even if we have terribly chanted hundreds of mantras, we cannot go back and rechant them. Neither can we know whether we will chant attentive mantras in the future. Therefore, we must chant detached from the past and the future. That's important. And place all our attention on the present attempt to hear. And he talks about, he said, I remember the first time I heard the Hare Krishna mantra. I, it was 1970 and I was a brahmachari in Tokyo, Japan temple. I was pacing back and forth on the mats when suddenly I heard myself pronounce the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Maybe you've had that experience. I had been chanting for more than two years, but this time but my and by this time in my sudden hearing and the power of the sweetness of the mantra shocked me. I thought this is why they tell you have to listen while you chant. Imagine what it would have been like if I had heard all the mantras like this all 16 rounds. We focus on one mantra because it's impossible to listen to two mantras at the same time, what to speak of 16 rounds worth of mantra. We are only capable of listening to one mantra we are uttering at the moment. Therefore, we have to keep bringing the mind back to the simple task of listening. And Prabhupada used to say that, just here, just here. But the mind doesn't let you but you have to try to fight that mind and bring it back to the sound of Krishna. Sometimes devotees who have tried this technique have noticed that their mind wanders during the first half of the mantra and they don't begin to concentrate until they reach the second part. Don't worry. Catch your mind and allow, and allow the sound of Rama to lead you to the first Hari of the next mantra. <laughs> And be detached. If we find we have listened to our first 15 rounds, even if we didn't properly hear, I'm sorry, if we find we haven't listened to our first 15 rounds, then even if we didn't properly hear any mantras, even any one of the names of Krishna, never mind. We do not have the freedom to bring those mantras back. N neither can we promise to do better in the future. We have only enough freedom to listen to the mantra starting with the one holy name we are now chanting. 
There is no point lamenting about the past or worrying about the future. Better to simply hear the one mantra we are chanting in the present. So that's what it means to be detached.